the riders spilling out onto the circuit for the first of six heat races in the pro category here today riders all looking for double figure tallies in each of their outings to try and make their way through towards today's grand final and with the best possible starting position as well the top four in the championship lining up in the first pro race in Amman Valley here today round number six of the 2017 campaign on the front row the number 98 Richard Mason currently fourth in the series standings after a podium finish at Greenfield TT at round number four alongside him the reigning champion Alan Burtwistle winner of one of two rounds here in the Amman Valley last season winner of two of the five events in this 2017 campaign so far Toby Hells the winner of the other also lines up off the front row watching for Aidan Collins coming through from the back row as well. He's immediately firing his way through to fourth position. Alan Burtwistle, meanwhile, has got off in pursuit of the lead. Collins comes through to second place within half a lap. It's Burtwistle who leads. Richard Mason in second. Race on for third position. Collins on the inside. Toby Hales on the outside. We've got the top performers from this round last season duking it out up front in the first of two round one heat races. Separate pack further down the order from fifth position down. Involving the number 95, Vince Hurst, who holds the position for the moment. And Gerard Bailo, the Spanish wildcard, also in the mix. At the moment, though, being held behind Vince Hurst on that number 95 bike. It's Alan Burtwistle up front. Toby Hales in second. Third with Richard Mason. Aidan Collins restricted to fourth position for the moment, at least. Still fifth with Vince Hurst and Gerard Bailo down in sixth position. The top two starting to make a break. Richard Mason... Seemingly holding up Aidan Collins here slightly. Collins having come through from the back row, though. Not a bad effort at all. Mason scrubbing off his own speed as he runs wide. Collins alongside. Good racing here for third. Collins has to back out of it. That's going to give Mason the speed. Down the back straight. Toby Hales hasn't been dropped by Alan Burtwistle out in front. The two winners from the Amman Valley in 2016 are the top two in the opening race in 2017. But Whistle runs wider than he wants to go. Hales has got a good turn of speed. Collins, meanwhile, cuts through down on the inside to pass Richard Mason. Mason dropping to fourth, but we're under a red flag situation on the far side of the circuit. Stricken rider on the racing line. If I'm not much mistaken, it was the, the number 70 who has come a grief on, on the far side of the circuit, Richard Roden, and that's called an early halt to this one. And I suspect that that race may well be declared uh, as we had completed uh, far more than two thirds of the race. A shame that it ended like that, uh, particularly with Aidan Collins uh, battling with Richard Mason, and we had a good fight between Alan Burtwistle and Toby Hales as well. So that result should be declared at the end of the previous lap, which will give us Alan Burtwistle taking the chequered flag ahead of Toby Hales in second, Richard Mason in third, and Aidan Collins, who had found his way down the inside of Richard Mason, will end up finishing behind him at the end of that previous lap. Great racing between the top four in the championship, also the top four in that race. Three of them, though, starting off the front row of the grid, so Aidan Collins can't be too disappointed about finishing behind them, having come through from the back row. What a start it was he made as well from the back row. Straight up into second position earlier on in the race. And the momentum of uh, his rivals carrying them through. Richard Mason taking third position then. Second place going the way of Toby Hales and the big 15 race points going the way of Alan Burtwistle. Perfect start to the day for the reigning champion and to win it here last season as well, looking for his third victory of this 2017 campaign. Alan Burtwistle, 15 points ahead in the championship standings of Aidan Collins, the winner at round number one, who since then has been beaten by Alan Burtwistle in each of the last three rounds. So he has ground to make up uh, quite urgently in the remaining three rounds of this 2017 campaign, two of them taking place over the same weekend here in the Am Amman Valley. Last of the round one heat races then is the second race of the day in the pro category. The front row will feature Sam Hurst on the number 116 and Gary Burtwistle on the number 11. Middle row with the number 35, the number 100 of uh, Matt Lates and the number 38, George Pickering, who returned to the championship after three missed rounds through injury. Last time out in Kings Lynn with a 10-point score. Back row of the grid, Michael Dijkstra. 
making his fifth appearance of the 2017 campaign after missing the last round last time out in Kings Lynn. Number 37, Leia Toklove, and uh, finally Kai Fort off the outside of the back row. Second of the pro races, the weaker of the two in round number one, to be perfectly honest. Real opportunity for some of the lesser lights in the pro championship to pick up major points and try and move their way through towards the grand final here this afternoon. Sam Hurst it is who leads them early on. Gary Burtwistle, fifth in the championship, the top performer of this group so far this season, up in second place. Close racing for fourth, fifth and sixth positions on that opening lap as Leah Toklove tries to thread her way through further down the order. But it's Sam Hurst who's made the break up front. Has Gary Burtwistle got the answer? Burtwistle, a strong performer on this circuit last season. Up in P2. And Michael Dixtra's keeping with the top two as well, though he's gone way, way too deep here on the bottom bend. And that could end his challenge for a top two finish in this race. He certainly had plenty of speed on the opening two laps, maybe just a little bit too much speed as he powered past the apex here on the bottom bend. Sam Hurst versus Gary Burtwistle up front. Dropping back slightly, Michael Dijkstra in P3. Sam Hurst under no great pressure so far in this one. Back late in fourth position. Still George Pickering in fifth. Hasn't been able to find his way past. Leo Toklov directly behind him now in sixth position. Pickering trying to cut to the inside and challenge for fourth place. Matt Lake holding on to it well though for now as they come towards the final lap. Gary Burtwistle eyeing up a move on Sam Hurst. He's been stalking him throughout this race. Still Hurst leading, not much more than a bike length between them. Burt Whistle goes for broke, dives down the inside. Hurst has the momentum and the outside liner comes back around him. Good racing for top spot. So it'll be Sam Hurst if he can hold on ahead of Gary Burt Whistle to become the second race winner of the day in the pro class. To level the scoring at the top of the standings as Pickering comes firing through down the inside of Michael Dijkstra to take the third of the double figure scoring positions away in the run down to the line. Sam Hurst takes it, Gary Burtwistle in second. Good recovery ride from George Pickering on the number 38 bike from the middle row to get third, just about ahead of Michael Dijkstra who'd got off to a brilliant start, but uh, ran wide whilst pursuing the top two and then was overcome by George Pickering later on in the race. It hadn't been a convincing start to that race, to be perfectly honest, from George Pickering, but he found his way back through into a major points-paying position well and comes away with the 10 race points in the second of the round one heat races. So look at the point standings after the opening rounds of heats in the pro category, and it's Alan Burtwistle who leads the way, tied with Sam Hurst. The advantage to the riders in the second of the round one pro races, the easier of the lineups, to be perfectly honest, with the top four in the championship standings having all lined up in the first of six heat races in the pros. So Burt Whistle and Hurst leading the way. Toby Hales and Gary Burt Whistle on 12 points apiece. 10 points apiece for Richard Mason and George Pickering. And it's Aidan Collins who has the work to do as up against three of his main championship rivals, he was unable to make his way through from fourth position first time out. Now into line for the third race of the day in the pro category. Round number two in the pros getting underway and Aidan Collins now has the front row of the grids for this third race of the day. Aidan Collins then on the number 90 machine. Richard Roden was due on the outside of him. Gerard Bilo, not a particularly impressive first appearance here in the Amman Valley first time out. He only picked up uh, seven race points up against all the top performers in round number one. Underway then with the third race of the day in the pro category. Fast start from Aidan Collins. Bilo's there in second position. He's under pressure though. As they come down the home straight for the first time, Gary Burtwistle coming through. Sam Hurst up to fourth position. Hurst looking for a way around the outside of Gerard Bilo at the moment for third. Toby Hale's also recovering from the back of the field. He's up to fifth place. Change of position for sixth and seventh as well. As down the inside comes Toby Hale's really late to the turn on the top bend and through for fourth position. Bilo going backwards, finding this round much tougher than Greenfield, which was a similar surface to what you'd expect over in the Spanish Flat Track Championship as Gary Burtwistle loses control momentarily on the bottom turn and Sam Hurst comes through. Toby Hale's trying to take advantage as well, can't quite do so for the moment. Close racing for second, third and fourth positions, but Aidan Collins the five-time British champion has broken clear up front. 
Hale's getting around the outside of Gary Bertwistle for third, but now has Sam Hurst in his path. All three riders in contention for second place. Hales continues with the outside break. Hurst tries to push him wide. Hurst squeezing his way to the inside in the top turn. But continuing his burst around the outside, Toby Hales comes through for second. Quite brilliant from Toby Hales from further down the order. And Hales has come through from the back row of the grid up to second. 2016 winner here in the Ahmad Valley. Sam Hurst still holding on ahead of Gary Burtwistle. Just the slightest of errors off turn number four for Burtwistle. Killed his momentum and lost him second place. It's going to be Aidan Collins with a first race victory of the day, with the first double figure score of the day. Who moves on to 24 race points with the win. Great ride from Toby Hales. A second consecutive runner up position for him. Third place, Sam Hurst. Fourth with Gary Burtwistle. He'll be a little bit frustrated with that. He held a better position for a while there. Gerard Bylow down the order. Tough uh, baptism of fire for him in South Wales. And uh, he now has work to do in his remaining ride. If he wants to make a direct transfer through to the eight final, the invited rider, the wild card from Spain, Gerard Bylow, only seven points first time out. And uh, couldn't make use of his front row grid slot there in the third race of the day in the pro category. Aidan Collins certainly did make good use of the front row though, powering away from the middle of that front row and away to the chequered flag. So uh, that does him a lot of good in terms of the heat points totals here today, as he obviously looks for a direct transfer through to the final, but he's also got to think about contending with the uh, seeding positions and with the points total scored so far by Sam Hurst in particular, who uh, is the new points leader after race number three. Do still have uh, Alan Burtwistle to come, of course, the winner in race number one in the pros as we come out onto track now for the fourth pro race of the day. Matt Lakeju off the inside of the front row, alongside him, Mike Hill. The middle row will be Leo Toklov. And uh, also the 581 of Michael Dijkstra. The back row is with Alan Burtwistle, Richard Mason, and Vince Hurst between them. Now, this is a crucial race for uh, Alan Burtwistle. Aidan Collins could only manage fourth off his back row grid slot. Alan Burtwistle has a slightly easier race in which to do it than Aidan Collins did first time out in race number one. How well will Alan Burtwistle be able to find his way through? And Richard Mason as well. 10 points first time out. He's in amongst the top five in the championship standings in 2017. The veteran compared to some of the others in the pro class, but he has maintained his form brilliantly and really come back at them in 2017, Richard Mason. So Alan Burtwistle then, looking to make it two wins out of two. Sam Hurst couldn't quite manage that feat last time out, but it has been two successive top three finishes for him. Race number four in the pro category gets underway. Fast start from Alan Burtwistle off the back row, but he can't really convert it. He's only made up two positions in the run down to the first turn. Gets the better of Vince Hurst down the inside. Finds his way trapped. So Burtwistle's going to have to work hard for this one. Trying to squeeze his way past Richard Mason, which he does pretty aggressively into the bottom bend. Mason ends up trapped behind Mike Hill, but finds his way through to fourth position. Burtwistle's now up to second, running Michael Dijkstra wide down the back straight. Richard Mason will be next to try and find his way past the Dutchman. Alan Burtwistle swiftly through into second place. Now challenging for the race leads. Held for the moment at least by Matt Late. Ahead of Alan Burtwistle, Michael Dijkstra in third. Fourth position with Richard Mason. The front four have broken away. Ahead of Mike Hill in P5. Leito Club in sixth position. Vince Hurst is at the back of the field watching on. Tote Club going for a dive down the inside of Mike Hill, but has to back out of it as Dijkstra comes through down the inside for second place. But Whistle had already found his way past Late. Mason trying to come through as well. Matt Late ends up going from first to fourth in the matter of a couple of turns. Richard Mason coming through for P3 then. It's Alan Burtwistle up front where he needs to be to make it two wins out of two and convert a back row grid slot into a 15 point score. Surely now he is the favorite to move through to the final as top seed with first choice of starting position, which could be crucial as he looks to return to winning ways. Alan Burtwistle. Michael Dijkstra with a good performance so far this weekend. This is his best display 
in the DTRA Flat Track Series. FIM Flat Track Cup rider, of course, Michael Dijkstra. Looking to the outside line on the top bend. And staying right with the pace of Alan Burtwistle, but he can't get back at him. Burtwistle wins it. Dijkstra over the line in second. Third is with Richard Mason. Fourth, Matt Late, only narrowly ahead of Leia Toklav. The rest of the pack filtering their way through. Mike Hill ending up dropping back quite alarmingly in the latter stage of that race. Only one position from the back. Uh, position occupied by Vince Hurst. But a great win for Alan Burtwistle. Taking the chequered flag and the 15 race points to move on to an unbeaten 30 points from two rides. Crucial when compared to Aidan Collins, who only picked up nine points from his back row grid slot. Came good in round number two with a 15 point score. But it's Alan Burtwistle who very much leads us once again here in the Amman Valley, unbeaten from two rides in the pro class. 30 points out of 30 for Alan Burtwistle after that uh, excellent ride through from the back row of the grids. So we look at the standings then after two completed rounds of races in the pro category here in Ammon Ford. And it's Alan Burtwistle who leads the way with two wins out of two unbeaten on 30. Just behind him, five points in arrears. There's a clutch of riders all packed closely together in terms of points. Sam Hurst, the winner of heat number two in the pro class, uh, then coming up with a third position finish in the third race of the day. He moves on to 25 and sits in second in the standings. Toby Hales with two runner-up positions tied on 24 with Aidan Collins, who has the advantage of a race win last time out in the third race of the day. The only other rider to have picked up uh, double-figure tallies in each of his opening two rides, Richard Mason. Uh, two 10-point scores, two third places for 20 points. So the riders from second down to seventh in the point standing, separated by, by just five race points, with two races remaining. The final round of heat races next up. Heats five and six in the pro class. So we now move on to race five in the pro category. Point standings led by Alan Burtwistle ahead of Sam Hurst and Toby Hales. Top four in the championship standings, all within the qualification positions at present. Only five riders will drop out before we get to the grand final, of course. They will have the opportunity to go again in the LCQ. 10 direct transfer spots to the final. The next batch of riders will qualify to the last chance qualifier where only the top two will join the remaining riders in the final. Riders all lined up now. Vince Hurst off the inside of the front row. Alongside Leonto Club, Ross Herod. As we get underway with heat number five in the pro category then. Vince Hurst made a decent jump, but he's got swamped as around the outside comes the field. Gary Burtwistle in the midst of a pack there with Gerard Bailo. It's Leah Toklov who's picked it up brilliantly. Coming through from the front row of the grid. Up into second place, Toby Hales coming through from the middle. Fourth, fifth and sixth positions, the closest as they come around the top turn. Sam Hurst in the mix. Having had two great results so far, could do with another big finish here. Moving through into fourth position, fifth place with Gary Burtwistle ahead of Ross Herod who's slipping backwards. Gerard Bailo also coming through. Attack for the race lead here. Leoto Club has led us so far, but here comes Toby Hales. The 2016 winner here in the Aman Valley. Cuts back off the top turn, through down the inside line. Hales hits the front. Toby Hales looking for his first race victory of the day after two second place finishes. And he now has the race lead. Sam Hurst coming under all sorts of pressure for fourth position. Toe Club immediately dropping back up front. Sam Hurst versus Gary Burtwistle for fourth place. Gerard Bailo down in sixth position. After such an excellent debut in Greenfield, he's found uh, this weekend in Wales somewhat tougher. Good ride in uh, third position so far for Jan Simon to Tierna. And uh, he will come under a late attack from Sam Hurst, who's now broken clear of Gary Burtwistle. The race is for third position. The top two places seemingly decided. Hurst goes up to the outside line off the final turn, locks it up completely. He's killed all of his own momentum. And Gary Burtwistle closes in, but can't quite get there. Hurst went for broke on the final turn, but locked it up. And that cost him any chance of taking third position. So a couple of surprises in that one. 
but no surprise about the race winner. Toby Hale's superb from the middle row of the grid there. Currently inside the top four in the championship stand. He's very much in contention for a place on the series podium in 2017 and showing the form with which he emerged onto the pro scene last season. Really came of age here in the Amman Valley in 2016. His first race victory of the day in round number three in the fifth race of the day in the pro category. So Toby Hales then moving provisionally top of the point standings with 15 race points, moves on to 39. And above Sam Hurst, who finishes behind him in that one. Alan Bertwistle, though, will be expected to move back of the top of the point standings in the sixth and final heat race in the pro category. Alan Bertwistle will go off the middle row. The front row of the grid sees George Pickering on the number 38 alongside Kai Fort and Michael Dijkstra. The middle row of the grid, Alan Bertwistle, Richard Mason and Aidan Collins. That really is a power-packed middle row. And off the back row will line up the number 35, Mike Hill. It's been a tough day for Hill so far. May well find himself uh, in the last chance qualifier, effectively the repechage. It's pretty close in the top positions to determine seeding position on the grid for the final. But there's also a separate battle going on to try and make the last of the automatic transfer spots to the final in the top 10. 15 points was the cutoff coming into round three of the heats. The last of the round three heat races gets underway. Collins goes shooting up to the outside line. Alan Burt Whistle's gone more conservative. Collins has gone for a different approach. And it's an approach that's worked well so far. Michael Dijkstra leads side by side for second. Richard Mason ahead of Aidan Collins. Collins could do with ensuring that he stays ahead of Alan Burt Whistle here. He's got to attack and defend at the same time. Collins in third place. Alan Burt Whistle in fourth. Richard Mason just up ahead of Aidan Collins. That's the race for second position. Michael Dijkstra riding brilliantly here. This is the best we've seen him with the DTRA. Looking good for a place inside the top 10 as Alan Bertwistle tries to come around the outside line of Aidan Collins here. This one, a little bit of a calmer pro round than we've seen in the two previous rounds of heats. Settling down somewhat, but we've got a real race on our hands for second, third and fourth. Richard Mason losing speed there on the top turn that time around. That's the closest Collins has got to second place. Dijkstra, Mason, Collins and Bertwistle. Then a separate group further down the order led by Kai Forts. Bertwistle really working hard but can't find any way through against Aidan Collins. As they come towards the final lap now, Bertwistle going for the outside line. Could be Toby Hales qualifying through as top seed if Bertwistle can't find his way past. Dijkstra, Mason, Collins, still in that order, ahead of Alan Bertwistle. Can he find his way past Collins and guarantee himself top seeding position for the final? The answer looks like no at the moment. And what a ride this is going to be from Michael Dijkstra. This is the most consistent we've seen him in the heats so far this season. Collins looking up the inside of Mason coming off the final turn. Dijkstra wins it. Mason just about holds off Aidan Collins. They were nose to tail over the line, second down to fourth. Burt Whistle finishing at the back of that group. Kai Fort and uh, a somewhat subdued George Pickering further down the order ahead of Mike Hill who rounds out the finishers. An entertaining, if not quite frantic, sixth race of the day in the pro category with Alan Burt Whistle suffering his first defeat of the day, unable to find his way through from the middle row of the grid. Aidan Collins went straight up to the outside line on the first two turns and it worked out perfectly for him moving through to get the better of Alan Bertwistle, who had gone slightly more conservative and got trapped down on the mid-track line on the first two turns. Bertwistle then trying to recover third position at the expense of Collins, who held on whilst also trying to battle with uh, Richard Mason, the three riders off the middle row of the grid, finishing line astern, uh, one behind the other in the run down to the chequered flag. Richard Mason coming best of them, and he takes second place ahead of uh, Aidan Collins and Alan Bertwistle, but full credit to the race winner there, Michael Dijkstra getting the better of three of the top four in the championship standings with a brilliant win in the sixth and final heat race of the day in the pro class. On now to the last chance qualifier. Only the top two will make it through to join the 10 automatic transferred riders to the grand final. 
Kai Fort with 21 points, Matt Lake with 20, Vince Hurst 18. They have the first three starting position selections. Then Mike Hill, George Pickering and Ross Herod, who all tied on 17 points. Pickering had the next choice, having uh, scored the highest in his round three heat race. As we get all underway with the last chance qualifier. Vince Hurst making the start. Watch out for second position. That is critical. It's the last of the qualification places to the final. Hurst holds on to the lead. Matt Late in second place. Third place is with Mike Hill. Kai Fort looking to the inside line here on Hill. Hurst has been overhauled for the race lead. Matt Late ahead of Vince Hurst. Mike Hill in third. Remembering also that the three riders who don't make it through from the final here will score championship points. So even if you're battling over fourth position, that's worth one extra championship point. Three, two and one being scored by the three riders who don't make it through here. Mike Hill under pressure from Kai Ford, having found his way past him, he's now under all sorts of attack. Vince Hurst has been well and truly dropped by Matt Late as we have a position change for third there. Mike Hill dropping backwards and Kai Fort recovering P3. But the gap between second and third positions is pretty drastic. And it does look as though, at the moment at least, we have our two qualifiers for the final. Matt Late and Vince Hurst. And the surprise will be that the highest scorer of this quintet, Kai Fort, will bow out before we get to the final. Having gradually improved during the heat stages to an eight point tally in race number six, sits in third position. He is gaining on Vince Hurst, but not quickly enough. And Matt Late and Vince Hurst come into the final lap. Should be the two riders moving through. Kai Fort giving it 100%. We've got a race in terms of the two point score in the championship. Ross Herod coming through up the inside of Mike Hill, relegating him to the back. That will mean that Mike Hill leaves the Amman Valley with just a single point compared to two for Ross Herod, but it's not going to change anything in terms of the two riders qualifying through to the final as Matt Late takes the checkered flag. Vince Hurst is the last of the qualifiers. Three championship points go to Kai Fort as he's eliminated. Two to Ross Herod and one to Mike Hill. The back three riders in that lineup eliminated with championship point scores and the top two, Matt Late and Vince Hurst, marching on to the final. Onto the circuit for round number six of the 2017 Maxis UK DTRA Flat Track National Championship. During the heats, we had a series of different winners. In fact, the only rider to win two races was Alan Burtwistle, the reigning champion and current championship leader, who brings with him a 15 point advantage into the grand final at round number six. Aidan Collins, his closest rival in terms of the championship standings, could only manage fourth position in the heat point standings here today. And that was after countback against Sam Hurst as the pair finished tied on 34 points apiece. Toby Howells had first selection of starting position courtesy of his race victory in the fifth race of the day in the pro category. Alan Burtwistle had second selection. Michael Dijkstra, who has been absolutely superb here today, the winner of race number six of the pros, had third selection, and Aidan Collins, fourth to choose. He has been brilliant from the start, customarily here today, and he's favoured the outside line. He's already managed to get the better of Alan Burtwistle once, back in uh, race number six, when Collins finished third and Burtwistle behind him in fourth. Both were winners in round number two, but it's Round one where Burt Whistle gained the advantage in terms of seeding position to the final. That's forgotten about now. Collins the winner at round number one. Burt Whistle the winner at rounds three and four. We've had two wild card winners in the five rounds so far this season. Gerard Bailo still looking for his first victory in his third appearance with the DTRA. Only just squeezed in as an automatic transfer. He's going off the back row. Sam Hurst and Richard Mason have both had good days, but have got work to do from the middle row here. Collins on the inside of the front row. He won't mind that at all. He's made a good start. Collins makes the break. Toby Hales is with him into the first turn. Alan Burtwistle up the inside line, trying to get the better of Toby Hales. Great start for Collins once again. 
Collins from Hales, from Bert Whistle in third. Richard Mason seeing off the attack of the other riders from the middle row. Michael Dijkstra has dropped quite dramatically back from a good starting position. And we've got a rider down on the racing line as well on the top turn. Sam Hurston is losing it after such a good performance in the heat stages. Real disappointment for him. Race continuing up front. Thanks to Sam Hurst for clearing the circuit. Toby Hales comes blasting around the outside of Aidan Collins. Where did that come from? Collins, though, in the context of the championship, needs to focus on staying ahead of Alan Burtwistle. He did have a nibble back at Toby Hales coming off the bottom bend, but Hales has opened up a six or seven bike length advantage now up front. Hales from Collins. This will keep the championship going with Collins ahead of Burtwistle. It'll also bring Toby Hales a little bit closer to the mix, but Bert Whistle goes for a lunge down the inside. Collins repays the compliment. He's got to be aggressive here. He does. He blocks out Alan Bert Whistle, who runs off the circuit entirely down the back straight. Hales, Collins, and Bert Whistle, the top three in the championship and the top three in this race. But the leader of the standings is down in third, and the rider who's third in the standings is up front. Bert Whistle goes in for an inside lunge once again into this bottom bed as Michael Dijkstra gets moved aside by Richard Mason, holding on to fourth position further back. We've got good racing going on right through the field. Sam Hurst actually, having now recovered to the tail end of the group, can do battle for 10th and 11th places, but it's not what he would have wanted coming into this final. Hales, Collins and Bert Whistle, nothing to separate the three of them. Richard Mason still holding on ahead of Michael Dijkstra, who's trying a wider line to build up his momentum. Down in sixth place, Gary Burtwistle ahead of Gerard Bilo. As Sam Hurst at the back recovers 11th position at the expense of Matt Late. But it's still up front where the closest battle is still to be determined. Toby Hales giving you the impression that he can break clear here. Aidan Collins never convincing in that second place ahead of Alan Burtwistle. It's down the inside into the bottom bend that Burtwistle has had a few goes at Collins. Once getting completely past before Collins Repaid the compliments. Sam Hurst flashes past start. Finish line, turn one commentary position, having got the better of Vince Hurst as well now. This time, Alan Burtwistle goes for the outside line on Aidan Collins. Collins will move to block. Will he move far enough? Yes, he does. Can Burtwistle carry his momentum down the inside, perhaps? Not for the moment, at least. Hales, Collins and Burtwistle. Alan Burtwistle, who confirmed his first championship around this circuit last season. At the moment, is about to see the championship race open back up again. As he's set for defeat at the hands of Aidan Collins, Michael Dijkstra has got the better of Richard Mason for fourth place. And Gerard Bailo is still probing for a way through on the inside of Gary Burtwistle. That's in the race for sixth position. Burtwistle again going for the outside line on Collins. Can he get all the way around? Collins moves the block. That gives the inside to Burtwistle. Burtwistle's going to go for a lunge. Collins has got to go for the cutback. Burtwistle, though, has got it turned well. And Alan Burtwistle comes through for a second position that could determine the outcome of this 2017 championship. They come firing past Vince Hurst down the back straight. Collins needing to get back through, but that was a beautifully worked manoeuvre from Alan Burtwistle. He went for the outside, Collins moved to block, Burtwistle cut through down the inside. And if Burtwistle carries this momentum past Toby Hales as well, a third win of this championship season, you fancy that the series overall might be won as well. We've lost Gary Burtwistle on this bottom bend. Not sure whether that was mechanical or a, a rider error, but the chequered flag is out up front. Toby Hales takes his second win as a DTRA pro rider ahead of Alan Burtwistle in second. The same circuit where Hales was victorious last season. He does the double. He's done the job again in 2017. Back-to-back -back victories, but Aidan Collins relegated to third may have just been the most important manoeuvre of the race. Collins hit the front into turn number one. He was overhauled by Hales, but held on ahead of Alan Burtwistle for the vast majority of that race. Only for Burtwistle to find a way through with time ticking away in the final at round number six. If Collins had beaten Burtwistle, that really would have reignited the 2017 championship. But instead, that is a fourth successive round in which Alan Burtwistle has got the better of Aidan Collins. 
And that might be one hand on the trophy now for Alan Whistle. And this 2017 championship may well be decided here in the Amman Valley tomorrow. Alan Whistle then taking second place behind Toby Hales. His first victory of the season, the number 20 who also gains ground in the fight for second position in the series standings overall. Dropping back Gary Burtwistle after his issues in that grand final. And that gives Richard Mason a clearer buffer from fourth position down. But uh, his gap to the top three also opening up after the result of that grand final with Aidan Collins taking third, Alan Burtwistle in second and Toby Hales victorious.